Are you just getting into wildlife photography and you're kind of wondering what kind of equipment you might need? Well, today I'm going to go through uh, the camera that I use, uh, one of the lenses that I use, and I'm going to, you know, tell you why I got them and what their strong points are. And so let's get started. So with the camera, I picked the Nikon D500, mainly for two reasons. One, I was familiar with Nikon cameras as I started with the Nikon uh, 5100. So I already had lenses and I didn't want to move up into the mirrorless. Um, so, and the other thing is, is I did a lot of research before I bought this camera and the uh, 500 was <clears throat> rated as the best DLSR camera out there. And what I like about this is it's fast. It shoots 10 frames per second. It also has uh, 200 pictures before it lets you reach the buffer. So you can snap a lot of pictures really fast. Uh, autofocus is good. Color is good. And typical of Nikon, I mean, this is a, a semi-pro grade camera. It's, it's a little bit big, but it's not that heavy. It really isn't. Um, also, the, the grip. Nikon is notorious for having just really nice grip. So you can get a hold of this thing and I mean it just feels comfortable in your hands. You can carry it around, uh, you can put it around, you know, strap, put it on a tripod. It's, it's just an all around great camera. Next, let's talk about lenses. So I started out with uh, the 55 to 300, 1 to 4.5 to 5.6. And this was a good lens to start out with. It's, uh, it's, it's a DX lens. The, the issues that it has is it just doesn't have the reach that I was looking for. If you're shooting in parks or in your backyard, or you're at feeders, and you can get relatively close to these animals, or it works, it's good. It, it takes great pictures. But I was looking for something a little bit more reach, and so I found this one, which is a Sigma 150 to 600 Contemporary, and it's got an amazing uh, reach on it. So I was able to reach out and get a lot better pictures with this one. And it's been an all around uh, good lens. It does have, um, it does have some limitations to it, but they're all easily fixable. It is not the best for uh, low light. So if you're gonna go out early morning, try to get those you know early morning birds or any kind of wildlife then you're gonna have to bump up your ISO which is gonna give you a little more noise but there is software out there to help you with that but if you're gonna go out you know just after sunrise uh, just before sunset or you know cloudy days during the middle of the day you're gonna have a lot of light and what I have found too is Anything from uh, 5, 6 to 8, you're going to get your best results with this, your f5.6 to 8. Anything more than that for wildlife, it just doesn't seem to take clear, crisp pictures. Now, these are what people would call budget, budget camera and lens, and I'll run some prices and put them up on the screen for you to look at. Um, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, they are pretty much budget level. So they're great uh, camera and lenses to get started with. Now let's uh, let's go over some pictures or look at some pictures that I've taken with the, the D500 and the Sigma lens combination and kind of give you an idea the quality that you can get with those. So let's go to that now. So here's an eagle that I took just uh, recently and you can see it's got some pretty good detail. I mean, it's this eagle was taken, gonna look a little weird on the screen, it looks like. 
but it was just taken the other day along the Mississippi River here in Wisconsin, but you can look at the brightness of the eyes, the clarity, the colors, the detail in the wings. And here's another one. So this one is taken right out of the camera. Um, hasn't been run through, it's on Lightroom, but I haven't done any editing to it. But just look at the, the quality and the, of the picture. I mean, the colors are great. You can really see the detail in these wings. Like these feathers here are just all tattered up. Look at the head. Got some great, great detail there. Uh, color as well. Got a little bit of catch light up here. And here's one of a bighorn up in uh, the Badlands of South Dakota that I took just a couple months ago in December. And it's the same thing. I mean, the detail that you can get from these cameras is, and that lens is just unbelievable. You know, these just go to show you that uh, you don't have to have the most expensive gear to start out. I mean, uh, another one of a buffalo, same place out in the Badlands of South Dakota. He was just kind of resting. But you look at the colors, I mean, it's got grass all over his back. You can see all that detail. And then the horns, the eyes, the grass. And it's got, you know, it's got some nice bokeh behind it where the buffalo is clearly, you know, in focus. But then we've just got that nice little blurring on the bank behind him. Now, I don't have any affiliations or uh, with any companies that I recommend here. They're just ones that I use and that I, I trust and believe in. So here, just kind of give you an idea of what the costs of, you know, a, a used D500 would cost. Uh, anywhere from, you know, the, the high end here, these are used, is 1019 for an excellent, and then, you know, they've got a lot of good ones. And, you know, like I said, I go to, I bought two cameras now from MPB and have had uh, gr great customer service from them. Prices are good, cameras come as they are, or, you know, as they're described. But there, there's a lot of places out there to look at. But this just kind of gives you an idea on what a, you know, a, a good used D500 will cost you. This is also on MPV. Just kind of a comparison of cost for the Sigma lens. They've come down in uh, price quite, quite a bit. So like this one's like new for 509. Comparing that to, you know, some of the upper level Nikon camera uh, lenses that are two, three, four, five, fifteen thousand dollars, and you can get some good quality pictures with this lens. So, don't let use fool you or scare you away, and you know don't be afraid to to try these lenses that aren't the the very top end because they are good camera or good lenses and they take great pictures. Hey, if you like what you're seeing and you want to keep uh, following my channel, uh, do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button, hit the like, and if you've got any questions, go ahead and you know ask them down in the comments, and I'll be happy to get back with you and answer them to the best of my knowledge. So thank you for watching the channel, and we'll see you on the next one.